So this right here is the 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro in space black. And boy, does it look good. I'm loving the color. It definitely isn't as dark as I expected. Under this bright light, it definitely does look very space grayish. In the box, you get your instructions as well as your Apple stickers. And this year, they're in this really nice matte black color. And the included cable also comes in the space black color with a matte black end. I really wish Apple made it all black this year, but you still do get a white charging brick. It's insane how much smaller the form factor is of this laptop compared to my old 15 inch, and you're only dropping one inch in display size. The only thing that kind of sucks is the notch because you're not even getting face ID and yet you still have to have that huge cutout. It's been quite a while since I last set up a MacBook, but with the new OS Sonoma, it was actually a really smooth process. I just logged into my Wi-Fi and my iCloud account and pretty much it just synced and was ready to go in a few minutes. So, I've been using this laptop for the past week now. Pretty much everything I would usually do on my desktop, I've been doing on this laptop, so video editing, Lightroom, Photoshop, coding, anything like that, I've been doing it on this laptop. And honestly, it's really impressed me. So this right here is the 15 inch laptop I was using before. So this is a 2018 MacBook. It's got the Intel i7. I maxed out the graphics card and overall, it wasn't that great in terms of performance. So this is like a massive leap up. With this laptop, first off, there was no port, so I needed a dongle to plug in my SD card for my camera. But when I did import the footage, it was just super choppy, playback was horrific, and it really was just unworkable. So in order to edit videos, I had to proxy everything, and proxying stuff just takes so much time on this laptop. So. Honestly, I never really did use it for editing. I just kind of used it for web browsing, coding, things like that. But in terms of my Mac mini, that was super fast at doing all the editing. So often I would just wait until I got back from a trip and then I would edit it all on my Mac mini. But that really does slow down the process of creating content, especially if you're on the go all the time. So the reason I decided to make the leap and upgrade to this laptop was because I wanted something that was portable, that was powerful, that I could bring with me anywhere and do anything without having to sit down at this desktop, which is super inconvenient. I really couldn't decide between the Air and the Pro, but as soon as Apple brought this laptop out, I kind of decided that was the one because I really like this color, the space black. You know, it is really beautiful. It does kind of look like, you know, the space gray but under some lighting scenarios, it looks very stealthy. But I think the deciding factor was just how inconvenient not having those ports was on my old laptop that made me get the Pro. So I really do want the SD card slot so I can just put my camera SD card in here, get the footage on my laptop, start editing. I don't need to bring dongles with me and I don't need to worry about forgetting them. And then also this HDMI port. So if I wanna get a bigger screen, I can just plug it into my monitor again without needing adapters. And then on the other side here, you've got two USB-C ports. These are 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt 4, and then you have the same on the other side. So you've got three total ports capable of super high fast transfer speeds. Having a bunch of ports is really necessary because I use a lot of external storage. And this right here is the Samsung T7. So in order to get my projects from my desktop to my laptop seamlessly, I just edit all of the projects off of this. So, you know, it's a really portable light SSD, really high capacity. And uh, I think you can get up to like four terabytes inside of here, which is pretty crazy. But I just plug it into my Mac mini, edit all my footage on here. And then when I need to go travel somewhere, I can bring this with me and plug it into my new MacBook Pro. Something really nice about the M3 Pro chip is the base amount of RAM you're getting is 18 gigabytes. So it's slightly bumped up, but also this laptop has dynamic caching. In simple terms, this means the chip dynamically allocates the exact amount of memory required for each specific task. So overall, it's gonna make the GPU more optimized and more efficient. And something really interesting is you're getting an 18 core GPU on the M3 Pro, whereas on the M2 Pro, you got a 19 core GPU. So you're actually dropping a core on this new chip. But considering this chip is more powerful and more efficient and makes use of dynamic caching, it should still be more powerful than last year's in terms of GPU. So obviously this laptop is a really big leap up from what I'm used to on the Intel side of things. But if you're moving from say like an M2 Pro or the M1 Pro, there's really 
minor incremental improvements with this chip. And especially compared to last year's, you're talking about maybe like a 20% increase at best. Now let's talk about gaming. So Apple unveiled that this new chip has ray tracing. So ray tracing is real time rendering of graphics. So when you're playing games, it can real time render the correct shadows and overall make it look more realistic. But in terms of the selection of games on Mac, it still is really limited. And the games I like to play are GTA, Call of Duty, pretty big titles. And some of the games you're gonna find on Mac are just not very popular. Even Fortnite was pulled from Mac. You still can download it, but there's no more support or future updates. So you're getting an old version, but it is still playable. And I actually did play it a little bit with my PS4 controller and I was getting 120 frames per second with high quality graphics. And overall the playing experience was really good, but there's just a really limited amount of games. So if you are a gamer, I would highly recommend you just get a Windows laptop because there's no bootcamp support on here and your only real solution to play a Windows game is Parallels and performance on that is not that good. In terms of battery life, I've been really impressed. I did edit some Final Cut footage and I spent four or five hours on this laptop and only burnt through about 45%, which is pretty good. But in terms of overall usage, you're getting about 18 hours of video playback, 12 hours of web browsing. Overall, no problem whatsoever. You can definitely make it through a day, no matter what you're doing. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to London to the Canadian Embassy. I'm also meeting up with my YouTuber friend, and I'm definitely gonna be bringing this laptop with me. Just the form factor and how light this is makes it great for, you know, if you are going like on a train and you wanna work, or if you're going to a hotel, it's perfect. And uh, I am gonna be editing while I'm away. Probably will film a little bit about that so I can put it in my full review video. But um, maybe I'll film a day in the life with the MacBook Pro. I was gonna film a day in the life with the Pixel, so I'm kind of stuck between which one I should do right now. Uh, just because it's gonna be a cool trip going away to London and everything. Um, yeah, but no, overall I am really loving this laptop. One thing I really love is the keyboard. So I had the old butterfly keys, but now you have that original magic keyboard that's got that nice tactile feel. So that is something I really do notice coming from my old laptop because the keys were really horrible to type on. While I'm away on my trip, I will be using this case right here. So this is from a company called Journey. This is the 15 inch model case, so it's slightly bigger. But in the lid here, you have a MagSafe wireless charger and a standard wireless charger. So you could charge your AirPods, your iPhone, and it just plugs straight into your laptop. But also it acts as like a desk mat. So uh, if you're on the train, maybe it's like a dirty table, you don't really want to put your laptop down, then you can go ahead and use this. It's basically like a, a desk mat, and then you have your chargers at the side. So I do have one for my actual desk setup, like a full on mat, but this is just something that's quite portable. So uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, link will be down below. It's not sponsored, I just think it's a really cool case. But overall, this laptop is just great for content creators. If you're editing videos on the go, this is perfect. It's powerful, it's lightweight, and overall, it's really premium. I love Macs because I love how premium the build quality is. This thing feels so solid, like in the hand, it feels like one piece. Even the hinge on the lid is just really smooth and really solid. There isn't any wobbling and all the ports are really polished. Apple actually did smoothen them out so they're less sharp inside, which is really good. Hopefully that will reduce the paint chipping off when you go ahead and actually plug in the cable. Something I was a little bit worried about when getting the smaller laptop was of course battery life, but I mentioned it's good. And the other thing was the speakers. So the speakers inside of here are actually really good and it almost sounds like they're coming from underneath through these fan ports. You get a lot of bass coming from underneath the laptop and then you kind of get the rest of the sound coming through the stereo speakers on top, which is really nice. So you get like this really full, loud sound. And overall, when I'm editing my videos, the speakers on here are insanely good. But other than that, you're still getting the same Mac experience that you were last year and the year before. You're still getting the really great trackpad, the really nice screen quality. You're getting 600 nits of brightness, so slightly brighter, but you're still getting the ugly notch and the 1080p webcam and all of that stuff. 
But the new improvements are definitely welcomed. They're gonna make a huge difference to my workflow. And overall, I'm really happy with my purchase. But let me know down in the comments section below if you're gonna pick one of these up, if you're maybe gonna wait out for the air coming out next year. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys later. And remember to subscribe for future videos. Peace.